My name is Caleb and I've worked in the cloud computing space for the past two and a half years now. My journey has been incredible, filled with ups and downs, W's and L's, victories and tragedy. And I've had so many videos on this channel sharing my experiences, sharing certifications that I've done, sharing different techniques on getting into the cloud industry or the tech industry in general. But in this video, let me tell my story. I want to run through the major moments in this journey that led me to this position. Those game changers and groundbreakers that took me on the path that I'm on right now. The story of how I went from zero to cloud engineer. Where do I begin? High school. When I finished high school, I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. I was just a 17 year old kid who loved playing FIFA and loved playing basketball. And when I was coming to the end of high school, little did I know that I was about to make one of the biggest decisions in my life. And that decision was what to study. I had no real aspirations or goals for the future at this point in my life. All I knew was that geography was my favorite subject at school and I was ready to go to university and start my geography degree. But my parents said no. They didn't let me study geography. They didn't see a clear career path from geography other than teaching geography in future. And I know this is not the case. There's plenty of people who studied geography who have gone on to do great things, but this is the way my parents saw it. And they encouraged me to study something else. My next favorite subjects in school were business studies and computer science. And when it came time to select my degree, I was lucky enough to stumble across a degree that combined the two of these subjects, business studies and computer science and it was called business computing. You see, I was never that kid who grew up loving computers. I was never that kid who grew up and started programming when he was like 12 years old. I did not grow up with a passion for tech, but this is where my path took me, to study business computing at university. Now, fast forward to the second year of my degree, something really significant happened that I must mention when telling my story. I came across who I now call my mentor. I met my mentor at church. I'm a massive believer in God and I go to church weekly. I have a great faith and I come together with others who have a great faith, who I share a fellowship and a friendship with different people, brothers and sisters, who all have the same goal of building a relationship with God. And whilst I was at church, I met my mentor. He was a lead cloud engineer at a tech consultancy. And when he met me in church, he asked me some questions that made me really think. I told him I was studying for my degree in business computing and he asked me, but what are you doing to stand out? He said, there are so many people with degrees these days and they are not as valuable as they once were. He asked the question, outside of your degree, what are you doing to stand out in this job market? What makes you different? Okay, great, you have a degree. You're graduating with a thousand other people who also have degrees. What are you doing to stand out? I couldn't answer that question. I did not know what to say. And this is when he recommended to me that I go and take some certifications. This is the point where I first heard about the CompTIA A plus and went after getting the CompTIA A plus certification. This was such a significant moment. I'd never even heard of certifications before this point, but what he said to me that day gave me an understanding that I need to be proactive and I need to be putting in the work to stand out in the industry. And there are so many ways to stand out. Certifications is just one of them and it's the one that was suggested to me at the time. But this was so significant and was such a significant part of my journey. I graduated from my business computing degree with a 2-1, which is an upper second class. And I managed to also graduate with a few certifications under my belt, ready for the job market. But then COVID hit and I didn't know what to do after COVID-19 had hit the world. And no one knew what to do. The job market was everywhere. People were getting laid off from their jobs and furloughed. So much was happening because everyone was getting laid off and almost nobody had a job at this point. I figured this was the perfect time to continue my education and go on to a master's degree. And when I was deciding to do the master's degree, 
I decided that I was going to do a pure computing and information systems master's degree. So take the business out of it. I wanted to focus more on the technical side of things and remove the business side from my degree. I went on to study computing and information systems. And whilst I was studying, the job market started to get a lot better and there were a lot more jobs available. So now was my time to look for my first ever job. At this point, I did not care whether it was a cloud job, whether it was IT support. I just wanted to get that first job under my belt and start working in this tech industry. I started applying for roles and I got so many rejections and I was applying for pretty much anything I could get or any junior and entry level roles and I got so many rejections. I did manage to get some interviews, however, and one of these interviews was specifically significant because it was an interview for a junior Azure role. And one of the reasons that this was truly significant is because I managed to get the interview and do the interview. And the reason that I didn't get the job was because I didn't have enough knowledge of cloud. And when they gave me that feedback that I didn't have enough knowledge of cloud, I went away and did my research. I did my research and started to learn more about Azure. I dug in and I got the AZ900, which is the first cloud certification that I did. And from there, it sparked my interest a lot more in cloud. However, I was still just applying for roles and trying to get anything, anything at all, any experience I could get under my belt. And then came my first ever tech job. I used a specific technique through LinkedIn to get my first ever tech job. It's a really great method to use if you're not getting interviews or you're not getting through to anyone and no one's getting back to you on your applications, this technique would be great for people who are struggling with this job search. So do check this video out. It's a really old video and it is really impactful and really helpful to those that are on the job search right now. But moving on, as I started my first ever job role, another one of the most significant things that has happened in my career happened to me. I was fired from my first ever tech job. And you might look at me and think, Caleb, you were fired. How did you get fired? Were you that bad to actually get fired from a job? And my answer to that would be, it's complicated. When I got this first job, I did not know what I was doing. It was my first ever job. And it was a small company who did not have the resources to train me up to become a great engineer. There was barely any training to do what I was doing. And they kind of expected me to have a base level of understanding of this stuff when in truth, I did not know anything about what I was doing. And this is one of the reasons that now I have a strong belief that whatever you're learning in university, you need to supplement that with learning outside of university. University doesn't teach you how to be an engineer. It only tells you about a little bit about the technology. It helps you learn stuff. It tells you to do assignments and coursework and all this stuff and write essays. But when it comes to actually doing this stuff for a company and being an engineer, you need to go away and learn this stuff by yourself. Things would have been so much different if I got into a different company who had so much training resources and I could learn and they'd be patient with me. But honestly, I wasn't a great engineer and they really wanted someone who was going to come in and hit the ground running and get working straight away. And that was just not me. I made massive mistakes. There was so much I didn't know and they were not willing to move me past the probation stage and have me working for them long term. So as I made my last mistake, my manager sent me a Teams call that said, catch up. And we were catching up and he got straight to the point and said, Caleb, I'm really sorry, but we're letting you go. This was a devastating moment for me. And of course, it really affected my self-esteem, feeling like, wow, maybe this is how all jobs are in the industry. Maybe this industry is just not for me because if I'm fired from one role, what's to say I'm good enough for the next role? Maybe this is just my fate and I cannot be an engineer in this tech industry. But I did not look at it that way. I looked at it as this didn't work out. This company was not a good match for Caleb. So and so company just could not connect. And fast forward to the next roles in my career, I had a chip on my shoulder knowing that I needed to prove myself as an engineer that I could do these things and learn these things and become a great engineer who could work on stuff and get work done and all that good stuff. So after I was fired from this role, I ended up going back to university to try and finish off my master's degree, which I did not end up finishing, by the way. 
I left with a diploma, but I did leave with a postgraduate degree, which is not exactly a master's, it's a postgraduate degree. I don't really know how to explain it. Maybe that's for another video. But what happened next was the breakthrough moment. I'd already been through a lot. I'd seen rejections. I'd been fired from roles. I'd been through COVID as a graduate. I'd already seen a lot in my career. And this was the point where I knew what I wanted. You know, before I didn't know exactly what tech role I wanted. I was looking at any role I could get, but now I knew that I wanted to get into cloud. I'd done my research. I'd had my first cloud certification and I was ready to get into the cloud space. You know, I had three months of experience somewhere as well. I did have more understanding of when I went in the first time. So I started to grind out the job search once more. Now, once again, I faced applications and I faced rejections. We regret to inform you emails, unfortunately emails, but it only took me two and a half weeks to find a role. And I credit this role to one of my friends, shout out Daniel, who sent me this role and said, Caleb, I think this role might be right for you. It was my junior Azure administrator role. And I credit this role to having a good network with my peers amongst me and helping me along my journey and just know what is going on and know what I want is when you're looking for jobs, tell people, people want to help you. People in your community, friends, family, whatever the case may be, there are people out there who will send you roles that suit you or who will refer you to someone who could hire you or whatever the case may be. Networking is super important. And this is one of the ways I got into the cloud space. My interview was smooth. And because I had the AZ900 already and I could explain certain things about the cloud and the other candidates around me had not done this already, I had kind of a leg up against those who I was competing with for this role. That is the meat of the story. And fast forward, I went on to my second cloud role, which was the cloud security role, which you guys know me well for. It was a massive step up and I learned a lot more and I got paid a lot more. And, and during this journey, I was also posting all the time and documenting my career on this very YouTube channel for you guys to see my whole journey. And when I look back now to this long journey from zero to cloud engineer, from high school to university, to my first role that I was fired from, to my first cloud job, to my second cloud job, till now, I look back and I smile because the journey was difficult. It was not easy, but it was certainly worth it. Where I am right now and my current situation is I have left my second cloud role and I am taking some time to focus on the content I'm creating and the podcast and sharing a lot of the knowledge that I've learned over this past two and a half years with all those that are watching. This is my story and I'm so glad that I have this platform to share my story with you guys who can watch and really enjoy it. Thank you for the support I've had throughout my journey. There are so many people I could shout out, but I'd rather do it personally in a one-to-one -one thing. And I hope all of the things that I've mentioned, all of these significant moments in my journey are able to help those who are on a similar journey to getting into the cloud industry or the tech industry as a whole. And these bits of my journey can help you on your personal journey. And you can learn from all that I've said in this video. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.